course setup. This is the student view. So Guilford County has given us a te basic template, but we can make it, you know, our own. So I created this Bitmoji classroom that you see a lot of people have. I created it in Google Slides. You can also create it in PowerPoint by uploading images and putting them on top of each other. Um, however, different than some you see, nothing is clickable. It is just the image. It is difficult, if not impossible, or I haven't figured out how to create an image with images that are linked on top of it. So we have my course. I've put my office hours here and my live lesson times. I want wanted it on the main page. We have the same thing right here for live teaching times, but I wanted it very visible. And then my contact information. We have under meet your teacher. This goes to a page. I made a collage of me and my girls, talked a little bit about me, and I'll be making an introduction video to put there. And then we have getting started. This I've uploaded information that is important. I'm going to put an introduction to the course, uh, which will be a video that shows the student around the course once I've finished. Um, I have our units, expectations, some of my policies. Uh, some of these may be changed between now and the start of school, depending on what information I get from my school. Uh, live teaching times. I have created a separate button right here, which is just the image I downloaded uh, from you know, Google. And then I created a link that opens up Teams. So if you open up the link, it will bring you right into Microsoft Teams. And then the students are able to join your live lesson at that point. Uh, I have another video that you can look at that shows you how I created my class team and how students join that team. And I created that as an assignment for the students. This will link them to grades. Um, here we have set up, uh, Guilford County has made all of these buttons for each week of school, and this is very helpful. So they click here for assignments. Um, these are not necessarily the assignments they will have. Um, I have not gotten the assignment planned for my school yet, but I've gotten started on this setup. With Guilford County, you're able to change like your images here. I think having it very simple is helpful so that each day of the week, the students know what they need to do. One thing that I'm doing a little bit different and I'm gonna show you is I added this this week button. I think it's important to be able to have this link to the current week. So I'll update this Sunday night and I'm gonna show you how you link that. So first thing you're gonna do is hit edit. And this will show you how to make any link within Canvas. So if it's small like this, if you just click somewhere, hit enter, it makes it big again, if your computer does that. Um, so you click on the image. This is just the image um, that I downloaded that said this week. So you'll come up here to links. You can do external links. This is if you wanted to link to IXL or Teams or OneNote or anything that's not in Canvas. But we're gonna link it to the current week. So the first week of school, so we're coming under pages. The first week of school is going to be the week of August 17th. And then we'll come down here and hit save. Now it's linked. So now when the students click on it, it will bring them to this week. You have to update it every week. So if you feel like you're someone that's going to forget to do that, then don't add this button. At the bottom, other cool stuff we'll use. I've linked our syllabus page. And this is just where I've put in my standard syllabus that I've used in previous years, made some edits. I will probably edit it some more um, before the first day of school. I 
I have our OneNote notebook right here that this will link you to. Um, that's in another video. This will link you to the student login for IXL because I've had a problem where students would open IXL and work but not actually log in. Same for Discovery Education, Microsoft Teams. This opens up Outlook so, um, uh, for Guilford County for our school's actual Outlook login. Same for OneDrive. This will bring them right to OneDrive where they can make documents and PowerPoints and things like that. Uh, then I have this help and support page and I'll be adding more videos. But these are the students' help and support videos, such as how to join Microsoft Teams, how to open class notebook in OneNote, uh, how to join a live lesson, and I'll have many more added to that later. Uh, and this is this will link them to the inbox right here, where they can see their inbox with the teacher. So that's the basic way I've set up my class so far. Uh, the first couple of assignments that I'm doing, the first thing that they need to do, respond to the discussion and then do the join our team. This is where they're going to join Microsoft Teams and become part of the team I created, which is in another video. Then I have just a meet the teacher, ex uh, explore our syllabus. Um, I have a beginning of the year conference. Um, that I want students to sign up for over the first couple weeks where I can take a five, ten minute one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. And this actually links to a Google form that they will fill out and will create uh, options for what day they want to meet with me. And I'll make another video to show how I did that. And so that's just how I've set up my course. I think it's important when you create assignments that, for instance, our join the team um, in our beginning of the year conference, that a lot of these, when I create them down here, I'm going to edit. If it's a task I want the students to make, I do make it as an assignment. However, I come to no submission. The reason I do no submission is if it's something that I'm, I can see that they did like a conference form, I don't need to give them a grade for that because also it just creates excess work to go through 100 plus students to click complete, 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 complete. So if it's not something I need to actually grade, I just create it as no submission. Uh, and that really reduces the amount of grading and workload. If it's not something the students need feedback on or I need to check their grade, that is how I handle my assignments. Um, I do grade discussions because I do want to interact with the students. And I obviously quizzes and tests. And any assignment where they're actually having to complete something, I do grade it. Um, some of our Nearpods, uh, for instance, I have this as a how to send an email. I do not um, I will change it to on paper because the data that I get is on a separate form so it's embedded right here they never have to leave right here in canvas and you do that by embedding right there so I hope that helps that reduces um, how I submit assignments. Sometimes even with Nearpod, I will change these to no submission. However, the first few, I'm not going to do that. I hope that is helpful. And that's how I've set up my Canvas course this year.